about the new scouts. You know, it is such an honor, an absolute honor to be here, an absolute honor to reintroduce these vehicles to all of you today. You know, everyone wonders, why is this so special? You know, why does this mean so much? Earlier today, I had the pleasure of meeting Donna Bloom out front, and uh, her dad, Ted, was one of the original designers, and she was very emotional about being here, very emotional about what we're doing, and that is why we do it. Because being a startup is one thing, but being a startup with a rich and storied history and heritage is simply amazing, and it doesn't exist anywhere else in the industry. But I would like to introduce to you all the Traveler, and the Terra, our new scouts. And we wanted to pull from that heritage and that history when we chose the names, even when we chose the colors, which I'll get to a little bit later. But even the way we show the, uh, the name on the vehicle, you know, proudly debossed underneath the scout logo on the back of both of them. First on the Traveler, as you see, and then next on the Terra, as you'll see in the next image. We wanted to make sure that the name was proudly displayed amongst the design, and that we really created something that pulled from the heritage and felt special. But from a design perspective, what do we mean when we create a Scout? We wanted to create something that was versatile, a versatile multi-tool, in fact. But we wanted to create something that was also a bold icon that really would stand out in the marketplace because it needs to have that presence on the road. And then lastly, we wanted to create something that was a helpful companion because our vehicles should enable all of your activities and make them easier, faster, lighter. That's the whole point of a Scout. And we want to make sure that when we do that, we focus on the vehicles, their proportions, and how you make them bold. And you start out with our iconic, our iconic proportions where all of the weight is shifted to the rear, long dash to axle, very short front overhang, and it really stands out and it makes a bold impression. But moving from the side to the front, you then also see that you have these beautiful broad shoulders and that stance, the wheels out at the corners with the ground clearance really at the forefront of that presence. And after we look at the proportion, we want to think about how we treat the graphics on the vehicles. So the first thing you'll notice is that DLO graphic, daylight opening. It's a designer term that we use. But that daylight opening is very reminiscent of the Scout 2, and we wanted to make sure we captured that. Contrasting that with the shoulder, that softness comes from the Scout 80 the beautiful form language. But then the graphics on the front, both front and rear, these front mask and the rear mask, are the proudest points of the vehicle, both coming and going. And the only thing that sticks out further than them are the bumpers that are meant for protection. As we move around the vehicle, we want to make sure that we look at all of those elements. For example, starting with a DRL, that's this very clean horizontal line that runs around the vehicle almost like the equator runs around the Earth, really cementing the vehicle and making it feel planted. 
We even uh, put a Scout logo off to the right because it's signed like a piece of art. This is our artwork as designers. And as we look at the vehicle and the form language, we move around to the side. We wanted to make sure that we captured that proportion and that it stood out in the crowd. If you look along the body side of the traveler, you can see all of the focus is shifted rearward. There's only one single line at the bottom, and that really cements the weight, and it really pulls the vehicle forward. That form language, the softness in the shoulders, all of that resolves in the rear. In the rear of the vehicle, we have another mask. It's another proud moment where we have the spare tire carrier as well. And you can see from the execution of the spare tire carrier, it's beautifully integrated into that mask shape so that the graphic is undisturbed. But the treatment of the surfacing is tactile, it's mechanical, and it really feels like a bold statement. If you move from the Traveler over to the Terra, what you'll see on the back of the pickup truck is that we created a similar statement, but a little bolder. The ghost lighting that we have on the rear is really direct as opposed to on the Traveler where it's indirect. And so it has a bold stance, a presence to it, like a truck should have. It should feel tough, robust, usable. And as we rotate around to the side of the pickup truck, you'll notice also there, there's some really cool things that we did. The form language, of course, is the same. It's got that soft, broad shoulder, but another little nod to the Scout 80. This little flick here on the back of the pickup truck bed that most people that don't know the Scout 80 wouldn't know where that came from, but we love it. <laughs> and we wanted to make sure that all of that essence from the historical vehicles was captured in a meaningful way. And as you resolve back to the front end, you can see the difference between the two. Although they are the same through the mask and the central area, the truck has a very tougher hood, the form language is slightly different, and even the bumper treatment is slightly different to create those unique personalities between the two vehicles. But as you move through all of the details, you can see that we wanted to focus on that functional, tactile representation of design. Making sure that even with the lighting elements, that they felt like mechanical elements, inspired by binoculars, in fact, and you'll see some of those later on today. But that DRL, the way it travels through, disappears at the end of the mask and reappears in the body, is a nod to where the side markers are on the old scouts. You know, really picking up that character, but treating it in a new and fresh way. And looking through all of the other details, you can see that we focused on making something that felt special. Even the tow hooks here, for example, on the front. Uh, Scott is an avid climber, so we made sure that the hole in the hook would uh, fit a, toy, a uh, climbing rope to make sure that people could really <laughs> make sure people could really use it the way it was meant to. And even going over the rest of the vehicle, for example, the uh, clamps on the, on the hood allows you to tie down items if you have them on the hood or on the roof, and allows you to really carry the goods you want to, when you want to, and do the things that you need to. Looking at the pickup truck as well, as you see on the screen, we've got that side step with the grab handle, so easy access into the bed from the side, not, not only from the front. And we wanted to make sure that we treated the truck like a true truck. So you see the separation in the bed, body on frame, tough, badass, and ready for action. And the full five and a half foot bed is ready for anything you want to put in it. We wanted to make sure that customers could use it, haul their goods, hang out with their friends, have a good time, do the things that they enjoy the most with something that is truly usable and functional. Now stepping away from the exterior for a minute, put your attention to the screens. 
On the interior side, we wanted to create something that was iconic as well, something that was bold. So what we did was look at the heritage as well. And the Scout too had this beautiful brow, very simple and clean with a deep undercut. And we wanted to capture that width and have two simple lines, the upper and lower, that capture the screens in the middle. And then that deep undercut that you see from the Scout 2, we captured it and we allowed ourselves to take it to another level by having that grab bar at the bottom area, which allows you to grab on when you're off-roading or stand an iPad up in there or whatever you want to use it for. But it really organizes space and allows you to see the technology in a very clean and clear way. And if you look at this image as it's zoomed out, you can see it's a very clean and simple interior. The materials really come through. The shapes come through. What you'll also notice is that there are buttons in there. Yeah. Why do we put buttons in there? Because people don't want to adjust their volume on the screen. And they also don't want to adjust their temperature on the screen. So the easy things that you want to do, adjust your temperature, turn the radio down, whatever you want to do, it's right there in hardware at your fingertips. And we created a beautiful combination between the technology in the screens and the hardware in front of you. But we've treated them in a very tactile and mechanical way. So you even see the knobs on the steering wheel are beefy, tough, ready for action. The console as well, we took the liberty of pushing further than anyone would expect. And on the console, we did some cool things. We created a multi-tool and we have storage in there that is unlike other vehicles. You can see in this image, the mat in the top uh, has a little nod to, to plaid in it, actually. So the rubber is actually fashioned in the shape of plaid. And so it's kind of a reimagining our heritage. And just to close up on the buttons again, to show you how tactile and functional they feel, there's that one bank of buttons in the center for the HVAC controls. The overhead as well has one bank of buttons for the off-road controls. And we even put a manual compass in there. Because why not? And it's more fun. We wanted to make sure that we pushed the limits of how the vehicle is used, even having a pull-out tray on the instrument panel just below the bar, where you can keep your cool Scout binoculars if you want, or your laptop, or whatever it is, when you're sitting, enjoying your family, uh, off to the side. And then looking at the rest of the space and how we explore that, how we create that versatile multi-tool. The console having multi-tiered storage, smaller tray on top, bigger tray at the bottom, a refrigerated cool box, double uh, wireless chargers, and more. And if you decide that you don't want to have a console, but you want to have one more of your friends, we've got two distinct personalities. So in the Terra, In the Terra, we offer, actually in both we will offer, but it's shown in the Terra today, a bench seat. And not what you would expect in a work truck, in a base truck that no one wants to buy, but one that has great equipment, amazing technology, and the bench seat as an option. Because if you want to have more friends, you should be able to have more friends. And if you're a dog lover, it's going to be your dog's favorite seat. In this other image, you get a very good overview of the Terra interior, um, where we've really captured some cool things. Even in the bench seat, we have the perforation in there, creating a plaid pattern. So we're not doing it in the obvious ways that one would expect, but we're doing it in cool, clever, modern ways. Thinking of the heritage, respecting it, and pulling from that to create something new and fresh. Even thinking of the way you experience the vehicle at night, when the sun goes down, making sure that the warmth from the lighting inside can glow in the space, just like a campfire lights up the circle around you and your friends. Thinking of all of those elements, and especially 
from the color and material side, as I mentioned. You know, looking at heritage reimagined, looking at expressive color, for example, as you can see here, and authenticity in materials, pushing the limits on what is acceptable in the automotive industry. We start with the exterior. Even the colors on these two vehicles are inspired by the first Scout ever made, the Scout 80, which was blue. We made it a little more modern, matte finish, of course, because it looks cool. And we wanted to keep that hue. And then the Traveler, inspired by the first, the last Scout ever made, and that was Tahitian red. So a play on that, pulling that color through, and you can see the resemblance between them. It's something that our team had so much fun with. I mean, we were out in the parking lot today, and Eileen was given uh, an original paint booklet uh, from Scout, and she couldn't have been more excited. These are the things that are so meaningful to us as a design team, because with such a rich history, with so much to talk about, why would we abandon that? On the interior, we looked at different color schemes. This one, clay, for example. It plays with this rich leather that is worn, has natural scars and nicks in it, but we're embracing that you know, for higher utilization and character within the vehicle. And then looking on the other side um, at the Terra, you know, capturing this, this canyon theme and using something like hemp wood on the instrument panel in the doors. That really pushes the limit. Hemp wood is, is very sustainable, easily renewable, and actually the pieces that are coming off of that hemp wood as scrap are used to power the machine that creates the parts. So it's 100% 360-degree sustainable. So thinking about cool things like that that aren't just sustainable for sustainability's sake, but something that is meaningful and really does mean something to people using it. And then the customer experience. We call it the community UX. As you can see uh, in these images, you see lots of buttons. You saw the screens for a moment. You see the, the dial on the screen. We wanted to make sure that the community UX was a system that was easily usable. You can swap the interface back and forth between driver and passenger, so it allows you to have that experience no matter where you are in the vehicle. And that dial on the side of the screen, well, that's the volume knob for the passengers or the middle seat person because the driver's volume control is right on the steering wheel. So really creating something that is a community experience for everyone in the vehicle. It's open, it's light, and it really cements the idea of the connection machine. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're doing. We're building a community, we're building a connection between ourselves, our customers, and everyone else out there. And the design part, that is, for us, magical, right? But of course, our engineering colleagues are here today, our development colleagues are here. They've done amazing things, too, to put function into the vehicle, and Scott's going to tell you about that. Sure, thanks, man. Awesome job. Awesome. Well, a couple of things. First of all, just to clarify, I am not an engineer, so I wanted to get that clarified right off the bat. I think, look, just to think about Chris, he's a, uh, he's, a, he's a brilliant designer. He's also a very kind and generous person, and uh, I love working with him. I love having him as a friend. And uh, look, as you know, when companies start out, you have to posture yourself and make yourself look big. So, of course, when we were interviewing Chris, he came from a giant company, I will say. And I think Chris might have had more company cars than we had employees at the time of Scout. So, of course, when we were discussing it, he was asking, you know, where's the design studio and where's the software and there was all of this, and we had nothing, absolutely nothing. I was in a WeWork office holding that. So, much of these cars were designed, and Chris, you're in your basement, I was in a WeWork, and uh, away we go. So, magical things happen. So, thank you, Chris. Awesome stuff. <clears throat> Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. I think everyone's saying company sounds cool, design looks pretty cool. Have we properly kitted this thing out or have we compromised this thing? So this one, we're gonna to get to some of the goods about this machine that we are building. So I think first and foremost, it's relatively straightforward. The first thing we had to do was make this thing a proper, no joke, scout. And I think in many regards, we've absolutely done that. If you look at the foundation, if you will, of this vehicle, you know, the foundation, Obviously, 
body on frame construction, high performance galvanized steel frame. Terra towing, 10,000 pounds. Traveler, 7,000 pounds. Payload, 2,000 pounds. Now, I know you all love your Terras from back in the day, but these numbers might be significantly, significantly uh, better than what they, had, uh, what they had back then. And next thing, of course, is our drive system. And I think if you look at, obviously, 100% gradeability, projected torque, 1,000 pound-feet, 0 to 60, as quick as 3.5 seconds. Solid rear axle on this vehicle, front and rear mechanical differentials on this thing. So again, a proper scout. Now, if you look at what it's going to be capable of, obviously, waiting depth, three feet, ground clearance, sway bar disconnect, 35-inch tires, capable, potentially, let's see, of going even bigger, and a suspension, obviously, tuned on-road, off-road, air spring as well. I think the final point on making this thing account is our philosophy. Somehow, when the world got digitized, I promise you, Americans have not forgotten how to do things, like open a car door, like turn a knob, like pull a switch. So I promised you all sorts of functionality to let Americans stay functional and keep doing things themselves as having AI take over everything that's out there in this vehicle. <laughs> so now, hopefully, you see the credibility, but of course, we would be naive to miss the moment and not make a tool for today. So when we say a tool for today, what exactly is it capable of? I think let's talk about utility. Obviously, the pickup, five and a half foot pickup bed, two 120 volt outlets, 240 volt outlet, and again, 2,000 pound payload in the pickup truck. If you swing it around to the front or the front of the vehicles, again, golf clubs, gym bag, cooler, 120 volt, slide out seating, and of course, flexible storage as well. So this is a highly, highly flexible machine. Now, of course, the tool for today needs power. Power is important to keep these things moving. And of course, all scouts will be standard with NACS, North American Charging Standard, bi-directional charging on all vehicles, 800 volt vehicle architecture, projected 350 miles EV range on the Scout. So the power is proper. Let's talk a little bit about the architecture on this vehicle, modern zonal architecture, over there updates, remote diagnostic, and of course this allows us to really contribute to the lifetime customer value of this vehicle. I think another thing that's critical to make a tool for today is I think if you look at a lot of vehicles, frankly, they say it's our car as the OEM. You just happen to be sitting in our car. And I think that's not what we want to do. We want to make the Scout yours. So right from day one at launch, all accessories fully loaded in so you can make it your Scout. Whether it's racks, whether it's off-road bumpers, whether it's the skids, whether it's the wheels, across the board, Huge accessorization on this vehicle from day one to make it yours. We're just giving you the playground to play with. And look, we're also going to continue to play around with the vehicle. We know scouts. We're super, super work vehicles, and we want to keep that alive, whether it's a plow or, of course, the hay bale that you see here. This is the type of world we want to create with Scout, a world where you can work, a world where you can play, and a world where you can enjoy yourself in between. And the final piece, of making a proper Scout, of course, is this connection machine. The bench seat, as Chris mentioned, the user interface, which offers a community experience between who's ever sitting in the front of the vehicle, allows you to swip back and forth on this interface. Obviously, is very Scout. Of course, we want to hang out in terms of what you can see on this experience. And when we talk about the Hangout, this is where we're talking about the split tailgate. And yes, we do want a split tailgate. We want one to sit back. Sean, if you are here, this was sort of held out for you on this front. Accessory ready and uh, fantastic, ready to go on that front. Cost us a little bit more money, Sean, so I'll be talking to you later uh, on that front, but we'll, uh, we'll get there. And of course, the other thing we love is the open air and the cabana top. So proper fabric, you can see it here in this vehicle. Super old school, super open, and also super easy and a great combination. Now look, I think it gives you a sense of what we're up to. Obviously, there's a lot more technology and innovation in the vehicle, but I think you can see we're building a connection machine, we built a proper Scout, and it's a Scout that's going to be able to look for the future. But of course, I think as you know, these are complex times, oftentimes made more complicated 
than they need to be. But I think if you know anything about scouts, of course, we tend to listen now and then, and we always try to listen. And I can remember wandering around Fort Wayne in the early days, looking at the Harvester homecoming and walking by the old plant, and of course, speaking to a few of, let's say, the OGs of scout, if you will, if I can call you that. And of course, there was some chirping about this thing called gasoline uh, every now and then. And of course, we see what's happening uh, in the marketplace. And of course, many of you know the governor is a politician and a lawyer, but he's a keen insights on engineering as well. So we've had some conversations on this front. And uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. We gave it a name. Uh, if some of you are pretty onto it, you can see it on this vehicle. Uh, the name's Harvester. Let's take a look at the video. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so look, I want to give the scout engineers a ton of credit. They're brilliant, they're hardworking, and they're capable of doing great things, and frankly, they are doing great things. Look, it speaks for itself. It's pretty straightforward. Projected range over 500 miles, make the battery a little bit smaller, fill that space with a gas tank, and get the range that you see there. I think there's a couple critical points we want to make which is crucial. First and foremost, with the range extender, it's still a scout. All of that great ability, all of that capability, all of that recognition, nothing goes away when you get the range extender. I think another critical thing, it's still an EV. It's got the packaging of an EV. You still have the frunk, you still have all the packaging. The battery will drive both of the axles. Of course, the engine will power the battery. So this gives you a proper EV experience with, of course, the generator. The third thing that's critical for us in these times, of course, is the future-proof. Makes the platform future-proof. It also, of course, makes the factory future-proof. We can ebb and flow and move from range extender to EV, EV to range extender, or, of course, Terra to Traveler. Now, the most important thing is, of course, the summary. The opportunity, of course, is now to reserve one of these magnificent vehicles. I think you've seen the capabilities. I won't be repetitive. These absolute dream machines, under $60,000 with state incentives, $50,000 for this absolute, absolute magical dream machine on this front. So I want to humbly thank all the scouts and all the scouts-to-be across America for joining us here. Now, there's one final image which just sort of hit me as we were preparing for the presentation. And of course, you see it here. We took this shot uh, about two days ago, or feels like, feels like five weeks ago, but I think it was just two days ago. And uh, obviously a young boy uh, there with his binoculars on looking out. And I think, look, first and foremost, you all know that there was the original scouts and most of the imagery that we see, they're navigating this brilliant country in those original scouts from the 80 to the 800 to the scout too and we're very proud that you're all here and very proud that you kept this brand alive but i think you also know america needs new scouts america needs scouts now more than ever and when this young boy jumped in that machine got up the cabana roof and looked out into the future i said to myself and he said to us he's going to be a future scout He's going to drive a scout full stop. Now, I don't know where he's going to go in life. Maybe his parents are generous and it's his first car. And he's <laughs> whipping around to high school, I don't know, somewhere in New York, and he'll be the coolest kid in town, no debate. Or maybe he has a family and he takes them skiing in the mountains of Vermont off on the East Coast. Or maybe he takes his daughter to a wonderful college down in Columbia, South Carolina, and drops her off down there. Or maybe he's navigating the highways and the byways and the roads of this proud and incredible country. And maybe he goes all the way out to California. Maybe he goes to Ventura, California. We know some good scout fans in that place. And maybe, maybe, maybe when he's driving, you'll catch his eye somewhere. And maybe he'll catch yours. And you can say, you were here. You saw him. You saw him when he fell in love with scout. 
and hopefully when all of you fell in love with Scout, and you can say, I was there when, I was here when. So thank you very much for joining us in this magnificent hill in Franklin, Tennessee. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.